I'm, I'm genuinely stunned. I don't even know what to tell you guys. Chris Chibnall did it good. <laughs> Fans the Gang Theories here and welcome back to my in-depth review of Doctor Who Flux Chapter 2 War of the Sontarans. And I wasn't lying in the opening gag when I said I believe this to be a genuinely good episode. In fact, I would go as far as to say that it's the best thing Chibnall has written to date. To give you a little bit of context, however, on my thoughts on this era, for those of you who perhaps aren't aware, I've been a vocal critic of both series 11 and 12. I didn't see them doing a lot to progress the show for Forwards. I found the characters to be bland and uninteresting, the plots to be generic, and in the moments where you could argue that the Chibnall era took risks, I would argue that it took risks in the most boring way possible, by relying on past iconography and plot threads in order to have any form of impact. However, I believe Doctor Who Flux, War of the Sontarans, to be a sign of what we could have had for this era. Many of the issues I've had are rectified within this episode, or at the very least are vastly improved. Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, who I've been on record as saying is one of the weaker parts of her stories, shone in this episode. She felt commanding when she needed to be whilst not losing the comedic element entirely, and the people of the Crimean War's bad assumptions about her due to presumably historical biases was a really great way of effectively using the gender change, which arguably hasn't been done since the Witchfinders, and even in that scenario, I felt that more could have been done with it. The companions were not only split up in this episode, which is something I've been advocating for for a long time, but also were put under genuine threat as we see Dan infiltrating a Sontaran base, and Yaz actually being captured by the Swarm and Azure. Dan just feels so perfect within this episode, and has felt perfect in both of the episodes he's appeared in. He slots right into the TARDIS dynamic, with him even finishing the Doctor's sentences, showing how much of a kindred spirit he is to the Doctor, while still remaining his own person with his own desires, and not just blindly following the orders of the Doctor like some sort of robot. We also did get reintroduced to Carbon Easter in this episode, and I do like how they're sort of blooming a sort of buddy cop dynamic between Dan and the Carbon Easter. I thought it was a really fun dynamic. Oh, and also Dan just running around with a frying pan around some docks is just hilarious. Yaz's character also continues on her upward trajectory, trying to become a lot more like the Doctor, and I think that's going to work to her detriment. Her whole character arc gave me very Clara vibes, which while I'm not a huge fan of that character arc, at least it is in fact a character arc, and I think it is being slightly better implemented here, as the Doctor's not really indulging it as much as Twelve did with Clara. The Sontarans are an actual threat again, and can show how dangerous they can be, as they execute an entire group of people in this episode, and kill off one of their own, despite them giving useful information. I also, however, liked that the Sontarans were still allowed to be comedic, because ultimately, while I appreciate that they are more dangerous in this episode, I think the people saying that they have to be played completely straight I don't quite agree with. I feel like the Sontarans are inherently a little bit silly, so playing into that a little bit while still making them a threat I think is the perfect balance. The pacing feels much better, likely down to the one hour runtime, allowing for these multiple plot threads to actually feel like they have the space to work. And the plot threads that they did have, they all sort of connected to each other in a really good way, with the time distortions of the flux and the happenings within the Temple of Atropos affecting the Sontarans and their victory over Earth as they invade multiple time zones, leading to really cool imagery as we see Sontar has taken the place of both Russia and China. Even things like Sagan Akinola's music I felt was stronger, with the booming thuds really fitting the Sontaran's militaristic theme, and Azure and Swarm's theme being suitably creepy and unnerving. That scale that I praised the previous episode for having is still here, except this time I feel like the plot threads are much better implemented. This episode isn't perfect, however, as it still has quite a bit of expository dialogue to explain historical events, as well as just telling you what things are, when you could probably figure it out for yourself. That Joseph Williams from 
Keaton guy also hasn't really factored into the plot yet and has kind of been an outlier in both of the last two episodes. I kind of assumed that the tunnels he was digging in episode one were to act as some sort of shipyard for the Sontarans, which explains why in 2021 Liverpool we see Sontaran ships on Liverpool docks, but that didn't really factor in. I'm obviously not ruling out the possibility that he couldn't be a factor in future episodes, but right now he's just felt like an outlier in both. Also, Dan's parents' reaction to aliens taking over Earth and a total solar eclipse happening for three minutes feels weirdly underplayed, and by extension I feel like the rest of humanity's reaction to that is relatively underplayed because they are the only source of information we have for people's reaction to this event. I did, however, enjoy their presences and thought they were a very entertaining duo, and I look forward to seeing how they factor into the rest of the series. Some of the dialogue does still feel a bit clunky and sort of unearned. For example, there's a scene where Dan's like, I've had a lot of experience dealing with aliens these last few days, when as an audience we've only really seen him encounter two prior to this, that being the Carbonista and the Doctor. There's also a line about a drunken man hitting the Sontaran's probing vent with a mallet, which while funny, does lead me to ask the question, why would the Sontarans keep pubs open if they've enacted a curfew? Which by the way did add to the Sontarans Sontarans feeling like much more of a threat as I mentioned earlier. I'm also not a huge stickler for effects as Doctor Who is known for being loved despite some pretty shoddy effects, but the CGI in this episode is a bit ropey in places, particularly during the Crimean War, which I can only assume is why we didn't see much of that battle, which I found to be a shame as I was kind of looking forward to seeing the Sontarans throw down with the British Army, although I will say we did see more of it than we did the Revolution of the Daleks fight between the defense drones and the Death Squad darling. so at least there's that. There's also just some plot things that they don't really explain, like they don't really explain why the soldier guy comes back to life. And on a personal note, I would still kind of prefer it if there are a few less plot threads going on in the episode, however, as I said, it was much better implemented in this episode, as opposed to how it's been implemented in previous ones. But those things aside, War of the Sontarans was not only fun, had plot threads that all made sense and connected to one another, was well paced, had some good character work, and some threatening villains in forms of both the Sontarans, Azul, and the Swarm, but also genuinely got me excited to see what was going on next week with the cliffhanger. I won't spoil it for perhaps those of you who don't know, but trust me, it is worth the wait. But those are my thoughts on War of the Sontarans and why I personally believe it to be Chris Chibnall's best episode of Doctor Who. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please do subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed. Also, quick shout out to Jason Peace, Deb Iona, Simon Ashley, Shane Smith, Patrick Muson, Ree Kevin, Seb Lowndes, and Jay Monroe. If you want to become a member, feel free to do so. It really helps out. You get exclusive posts, shout outs in every video, and even your own badge and custom emojis to use during live streams. And I will see you later.